Hello folks, this is John again, and today we are going to learn how to mic up a cabinet. Again, I'm not a wizard with this stuff, I'm just some idiot who is trying to make a switch from amp simulation to fully analog, because I've been working with amp simulation for like 15 years now, and it's time for a change. But again, what I do know is how to figure it out, and I'll bring you along on the journey. Now, last video, of course, people pointed out, hey, you could just reamp the eyes and that would make things simpler. Yes, and I would love to do so, but I do not have a reamp box, which is still on my to get list, but I don't have it right now. I don't exactly need it. Also, right now, this method works, even though it's slow. So I'm also not going to spend that money on a decent reamp box right now. Also, in case you end up liking this stuff, then please subscribe, like and comment below. You know the, how, how it works on YouTube. So let's get started, shall we? First of all, what I want to do, uh, you'll see actually, you know, with, with, with miking up a cap, so you, you kind of want to know where, where the speaker exactly is and how you can position the mic. So what you would normally do, or, well, normally quotations, so what many people would do is just take their phone uh, flashlight, put it right up against the grill, and you can kind of see the speaker down there. Okay, and then you can move the mic and you're good to go. Now, the thing is, I got me this uh, cap clamp instead of a mic stand. I know it's not ideal, but the reason I got me a cap clamp is because I don't want to have too much stuff on the floor. This room is pretty small and there's already a lot of stances and tripods and whatnot. It, it, it gets cluttered very quick. That's why I opted for a cap clamp. So, but right now, see what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna remove this right now. And I'm just gonna put this, this painting tape across the length of the speaker, right about, not, not directly in the center, but because my mic is going to play, be placed there, but like a little bit. Now let's put it above, so we can then also see it properly. Put it on straight, like so. And now I'm going to use my flashlight, and then I'm going to mark a couple of positions onto that tape. For example, center of the dust cap, right here. Then edge of the dust cap, right about there. Other side of the dust cap, right about there. Okay, and then the edge of the speaker, right about here. It doesn't have to be pretty, it has to be functional here on the other side. Okay, that's already it. And with that, I don't have to use my flashlight anymore to fiddle things around. I can just use these markers to know where I'm positioned. Ah, great, this is so awesome. <laughs> okay, the arm here of the cap clamp doesn't actually reach all the way down that the mic is centered with the speaker. Uh, right now, it's directly in front of the tape. <laughs> so let's take this tape. Okay, there we go. Something like this. Now for this whole procedure, of course, I can not use my speakers to record. I mean, there's a microphone right there trying to pick up a clean signal. And I also don't want to use my open back headphones because they let a lot of the sound from the cab come through. Especially now, I have the amp a little bit louder, so the mic gets a nice loud signal in there and then everything else that might come in has a much lower level in comparison. These close back headphones, my old AKG K271s, uh, they isolate sound from the outside much better so I can better hear what's going on as well as it doesn't bleed out sound as much. So, and I can already hear the tone. Right now I'm directly monitoring this mic tone into my headphone. Hang on, let, let me show you what I'm working with right now. This is still the tone from, from last time. So just the raw amp sound with impulse responses.
Okay, now let's make a recording here. Let's call this um, the center for mic being positioned in the center of the speaker. And let me record this real quick. Again, I don't have a reamp box to record the eyes and reamp those through the setup. So let's give this a quick listen. Just for recording, I actually need these close back headphones, but for just listening back, let's turn off monitoring so I don't risk any feedback looping here. So yeah, a bit spiky, but all in all, not too bad. Of course, I still forgot to mention, um, we gotta set our priorities firsthand when we take a first gander at miking up a cab. Because, for example, this cabinet right here, it's a Harley Benton vintage 2x12. It's like a 220 bucks cab. It has vintage 30s in it, yes, but it's not exactly a Mesa Boogie rectifier cab. It's not an orange cab, it's not an angle cab or Marshall, whatever have you. Okay, so. Even though there are vintage 30s in it, which will give us a decent sound, it's not gonna be an amazing sound, okay? But we can expect something decent. Also for the microphone, this right now is the SM58, not the 57 for other reasons. Um, but basically they're the same mic, just with a different cap on it. So it's not gonna sound too different from the 57 actually. So here we have a pretty, yeah, budget setup low budget setup so just a hundred bucks mic and a 200 bucks cap so let's keep our priorities appropriate now of course this room is also not exactly made for recording a cab in it uh, these walls back here are pretty pretty bland but i do may have a solution for that later on in the video so but what i want to do right now is record this thing a second time and we are going to Dial down the treble here on the amp. So before it was at about 1.30, now it's at 12 o'clock, so it could be a little less harsh. Well, let's dial it down even more to about What's this 1030? I, I kind of like very, very discreet angles, like uh, straight to the side, straight up or 45 degree angle. It's just easier to, uh, to remember as well. Now, listen to that again. Oh, let's solo this. Yeah, that immediately sounds better. Let's also record the other parts now with this. Oh, now let's listen to this. Sounds pretty neat. Okay, now let's try out some other mic positions. Now let's go to the edge of the dust cap. So edge cap. But first of all, to the left side, because I already know there is a difference whether you go to the left side or the right side from the center of the speaker. Right about here. And I just now noticed that I have not recorded Studio One, <laughs> but now it is recording. Well, let's just make a quick test recording again. Now let's listen in.
You know what? Let's do it all on their own tracks again. <laughs> awesome, that spikiness is immediately gone and just sounds great. So let's keep it at that for now and let's listen to this now. This sounds so cool and oh, we did here just a little bit of filtering just so that the low end doesn't get in the way of the bass and the top end doesn't get too fizzy but this sounds so good already in the mix. Okay now let's go to the other side of the dust cap. So let's make a quick test recording. Wow, that sounds even better because that harshness at the top is again yeah, smoothed out a little bit. I suspect with a different mic this would sound even better. I already know what mic I want to get me, but that is for another video, of course. So let's call this Edge Cap Right. <laughs> Sounds cool. Let's compare it with the other edge cap recording. Okay, so there you can see it's just slight differences there in the top range. Now let's try out some more positions. For example, let's go to the edge of the speaker. Let's go first to the left again. Yeah, let's keep the EQ the same for now. Just quick test recording again. Okay, it's it's bright enough. 
I was afraid that being at the edge of the speaker, it would be too dark. So I would have to dial up the treble again, but this is fine. Okay, okay, and let's listen in. Compare it again with the edge cap right. Definitely a little bit quiet, huh? Since I'm not actually EQing these individual mic placement recordings, I just keep them on the same tracks after all. So now, next mic position. Again, edge of the speaker, but on the right side this time. Right about here. Now this does seem a little bit darker. So let's give it a quick test recording again. Whoa, that's super dark. Okay, interesting. Um, so treble definitely needs to come up. Let's see if my mic placement isn't too far uh, to the edge. So I put it inside just this tiny bit more. Where's my pick? Okay, boost of the treble still a little bit more. Now it's back to where it was at the very beginning. So about at uh, 1.30, like between one o'clock and two o'clock. All right, let's check this out. Definitely also needs to come up in volume. The problem here is now uh, the input gain on my interface is set already very, very high. It's almost maximum. It's like in that last 10% of the dial. And in that last 10%, it gets very, very unprecise. Was it imprecise? You know what I mean. So just the tiniest bit of movement and the volume shoots up like crazy and it easily starts to clip and so... <sighs>
Okay, so you see on the right side of the speaker, we would need to boost the top range a little bit to get it brighter and cut through the mix a little bit better. Uh, but in general, the nuances up there, I quite like. It sounds nice and smooth and not too pokey and spiky. Okay, now we got two more positions to try out and that is in between the dust cap and the edge of the speaker somewhere or other give or take and of course also again on left side and right side all right here we got the in between left side That sounds really cool. <laughs> oh my goodness, I like that. Now in between on the right side. And now let's listen to this one. Yeah, nice. So now here we have a whole bunch of different mic positions and from here on out we could just fiddle around with post EQ in the mix and see what we end up liking the most in the mix. Uh, but well, personally I would kind of use two different mic positions for left and right so we again get a little bit more difference in there which creates a little bit bigger sound and more stereo width. You know what, let's just match these two in between tones. Now they're not different enough actually. We could do better. We could do better than that. So let's take definitely edge cap right in here and the edge of the speaker to the left. That sounds pretty nice. Let's also try and just match the two edge cap positions. Yeah, they're also too similar. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely quite like the edge cap to the right position and the in between on the left. That's definitely something gotta keep in mind. Actually, I could mark that down on the little tape there so we got that going for us
about what I still want to try out while we are at one position is if something like this will also help additionally because this room as I said is definitely not made for recording in um, I bought me this little thingy here this mic screen and let's see if that helps to clear up the recording even more okay now let's compare these two last recordings exact same setup exact same mic positioning and whatnot it's just the mic screen being in front of it on the second recording Of course, in the mix is very hard to tell any difference, so let's solo. It does seem clearer and cleaner. So I'm definitely gonna keep that screen for when I actually do recordings. Okay, cool. So, so much for that. That's a little bit of dabbling into how to mic up a cap. When I get me a reamp box, I definitely also wanna create a couple of impulse responses of my setup and then compare how does actual sound through the cap and mic compare to the impulse response of that setup. That would be interesting to f to find out. But that's it for this video. Sorry, this was a longer one without much of a point to it, I suppose. If there is a point, then I guess it's to just experiment and try things out. People say miking up a cab is a science in of itself, an art form in and of itself. Well, don't let that deter you. Uh, just see what happens. I mean, you can see you can get some pretty decent tones without without much of anything, okay? SM58 and Holly Benton vintage 2x12. So now if you want to find a very, very specific tone with very specific nuances, that's a completely different, different beast to tackle because then you really got to know your caps, your speakers, your microphones and how exactly to position things to get exactly the tone you, that you want. But if you just want to have a decent tone, then that works out rather quick, as you can see. I think all of these tones are very decent. And I would personally probably use them in, in the next recording or in the next album. Because I, I find this more interesting than just slapping impulse responses on it. Because this ends up being a more individual tone that not just anybody can replicate. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it and please subscribe, like, leave a comment below. You know how YouTube works and I shall see you next time.